starting here. It's been a long but exciting day for a lot of our members. Anxious to get back to that. Um, I'm just uh, very, very happy today. I'm very honored to be elected uh, speaker by, by the uh, Our 117 member majority has been built through hard work. It's a continuation of efforts that started in the early 2000s. As our predecessors fought and won control of the House for the first time in decades. In the 90 seats we held in 2013, for the historic majority we have today, we've seen the people of Missouri place more faith, more of their faith in our party. And as our fiscally responsible philosophies of focus on growing our economy, providing economic opportunity to Missouri families, and putting control of education decisions at the local level. The actions we've taken as a Republican majority to rein in government spending, create fiscally responsible budgets, reduce the bureaucratic red tape for our small businesses, and protect the values that matter most to Missouri voters. It took us from 76 seats in 2001 to 89 seats in 2009, 106 in 2011, uh, to 117 seats uh, today. This session will unveil a streamlined and focused committee system that will give each of my colleagues a greater emphasis, uh, <coughs> a greater emphasis on issue areas that interest them and where they have expertise and knowledge. Rather than spread each, spread each of them too thin with too many committee assignments, I want to position my colleagues to succeed by focusing their talents and knowledge in the areas where it can best help the people of our great state. I want the committee level to be where the heavy lifting is done in the legislative arena. I know that all my chairman and committee members uh, will rise to the challenge to produce the kind of well-crafted legislative solutions that will better position Missouri and Missourians to grow and prosper in years to come. This session will continue our commitment to create a fiscally responsible, balanced budget uh, which makes the best use of taxpayer dollars while cutting the size of government at every opportunity. In addition to our historic majority, voters also empowered us to overturn the governor's budget withholdings. As our governor continues to withhold approximately $500 million from the current budget, while also apparently making plans to ask for $200 million in supplemental funding, it's imperative that the members of the legislative, uh, protect, the, the members of the legislature protect Missouri taxpayers by closely scrutinizing these actions and requests. That may lead to an early test of the power granted to us by Amendment 10. One of the key areas where we can find the ground necessary to build a solid foundation for future success is in the realm of economic development. And specifically focused on the things we can do as a legislature to support and encourage entrepreneurship and invest in our small businesses so they can grow and prosper. I'm a firm believer that government's role is not to produce economic development, but it is our duty to create the kind of level playing field that will allow employers and workers to succeed if they work hard enough. Right now, we're seeing some encouraging signs of life in our economy. Revenues appear to be ticking up, unemployment is down, but as a state, we continue to fall short in many of the areas potential employers are looking for as they determine whether to relocate or expand businesses. Missouri can, it should be a premier destination for job creators, but that won't happen until we can be competitive with our neighboring states. Many of whom have more burdensome, uh, many of whom have fewer burdensome regulations, less growth stifling bureaucratic red tape, and a tax environment that allows their citizens to keep more, more of their hard-earned dollars. So with that, I will take any questions. Mr. Speaker, uh, protesters who arrived here in Jefferson City from around the state say they will measure you by whether or not you vote to save lives and promote dignity. Now, that, those may be their code words for changes in uh, police actions and uh, expansion of Medicaid. How do you react to those? Well, gee, yes, who does a lot of save lives and promote dignity. Promote dignity. And I, I think our uh, fine uh, law enforcement uh, Personnel across the state. So, I think this caucus is a strong supporter of law enforcement. If that's what they mean by supporting and saving lives. And I think they're going to want to respond. But what about Medicaid? That's what they do. They want to be able to talk to them. Mr. Speaker, there's some three dozen bills that have contained the reverse. And, uh, where does that rank on the list of priorities? I don't think that, yeah, as Senator Dempsey said, I mean, we're not going to have a Ferguson. Agenda for the House and the Senate. Uh, you know, 
I, I view the situation of focus of this room and a reflection of decades of bad government policy, whether it be in the entitlement area, failed education systems, the lack of economic opportunity. So, the extent that there's an interest in fixing some of the fundamental building blocks that have led to the deterioration of society in certain areas of our state, I think we'll be open. But, but this is not something I don't see us um, being eager just to throw money at a problem to say we've you know, said a declared mission accomplished because we've given a million dollars to this pet project and five million thousand dollars. So I think we're, we're, we're we want and will look at educational issues, economic opportunity issues, and as well as the role and function of government. Is law enforcement untouchable? So I, I don't think I don't think you can never say that you're not going to look for some way to improve. So if there's legitimate ways to improve, but I think we have to be very very careful when we talk about these issues that we separate failed government policies from those men and women who serve the public by defending our lives and property. They should be scapegoats for what a bad. Mr. Speaker, your speech um, was quite about a lot of principles, not much on particular. Why didn't you lay out an agenda of legislation that you want? Because you guys would just start attacking me, right? I think government's not And really, you've been around the Security for the I think when you and I talked, we got here about the same time. And and frankly, every every session, no session ends the way that it begins. So I think you've got the principles. You've got the principles of accountability, responsibility, and spending. You can try to find a way to pair back the role of government and make it more Because we go through the dozens of Proposals have been filed by my members as well, as members of my own party. That's the criticism that we're looking for, and I think that's that's the, the proper scope of, of what a first day speech should be. For example, Mr. Mr. Dempsey endorsed uh, changes that would address the Max Creek Law in 10% versus 30% proposal that Senator Schmidt has. And, and your your speech didn't touch on that or anything. Well, next time I'll make sure I get Senator Dempsey's speech. <laughs> Look, I, I, once again, I think there's some 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 merit to, to both those, but I, I believe uh, an open day situation should be about guiding kind of principles. You've said that, that if there's something that makes sense, we're going to look at it. I don't know whether that number is 20% or 10% or 25%. It's more than just the percentages. It's also what's kind of against the cap and what's not kind of. Fines counted and not uh, other monies that come in for amended tickets for infractions. I mean, all types of things that get calculated in there. But I think that's that's something which could have a place. And that gets into the role of government. The government should not exist for the purpose of fighting its own citizens. Mr. Speaker, the representative of Central Missouri has stated that increases for state uh, workers' employees' pay and the ethics reform are two major concerns of theirs. Where do those rank in terms of power and the rest of the house? Well, once again, I, I think we, we want to keep a qualified workforce in the state. We're going to work within the, the uh, constrictions and with the responsible budget and uh, with regard to, to ethics reform. I know there's uh, many, many proposals out there. Uh, we're going to refer those to the committee. One thing I'm going to try to endeavor to do is to keep them a smaller single subject bills so we can try to look at them. So we're going to see fewer of the big, for lack of a better term, omnibus bills this year. Yeah, at least early in session we're going to try to do that. Now, the once things pass and we start to actually get a later in session, I think that's a different problem. But certainly early in session, our encouragement to our committee chairman mm -hmm. would give us smaller bills and move them when it comes to your commitment to tenant powers, and we've talked about this before, but did, are you at a point of identifying some areas where you may use those? For example, you've got the uh, cyber crimes task forces in the state that are 
shutting down. And at least one organization has called for that to be reduced. Have you identified any targets? Yeah, we're in the process of doing that now. And, and the issue is sitting here today saying, I'm going to do this, and the government could release the money tomorrow. And then it's a moot point because the money's been released. So we'll be, um, you know, we'll be meeting with the, the governors. He issued a uh, notice to the legislature today explaining that he was, uh, that was not going to be in the age quarter days. It was supposed to be under the Amendment 10 provision. You see that as a sign that his office agrees that you can use those powers now? I, I, I believe it. Getting back to Medicaid, last couple of years, some uh, members of the House, Sam Senate, have proposed options that would say combine an expansion with adding private options. Do you see room for that in this session? I don't see a lot of appetite for Medicaid expansion. You look at, look at you know, the health care issues in the state have been at the forefront of the last three election cycles. And if you know, we know the majority is from 88 to 106 to 110 to 117. But that being a pretty central issue. And I think with the uncertainty at the federal level on that topic, I don't see us putting this on these future budgets at risk for the current
negotiating provision that resulted in um, a veto was the Ag Bill from last year. And to get the captive service uh, provision off of that bill, um, essentially, Senator Demings seemed to think that both bills can be passed as is without the kind of negotiation provision. Well, as I said at the very beginning, it's our goal and aim in this body. Back and forth between the two chambers, and I think we'll get along pretty well between the two chambers. We're going to try to run smaller, single subject bills earlier in session that apply to this bill as well as the other bills. Okay, anything else? Well, thank you very much. We look forward to getting to know y'all better over the next two years. Okay, thanks.